Hey, this is Wayne with Wayne's Tinkering Page. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about a little circuit I built that's derived from a project I did a few weeks back called the Sonic Grenade. Essentially, this little module here, I called it the Auto Power. It's a way of controlling power to an Arduino by push button control. So, for example, if I push this button and hold it for a few seconds, you'll see the power light light up there, the LED lights up, and it's powered up the Arduino to that little red light there, kind of lightly. I'm glowing. If I press and hold the button again, it'll power itself off and I can release the button. So I actually have to hold the button down for the what's called the bootloader wait time on the Arduino module. Uh, another feature of the circuit is that the power control is now under control of the Arduino. So when I press the button again, I'm really just sending a signal to the Arduino telling it I'd like to power it off. It, it, it internally uses a power loop and after it exceeds a couple seconds, it, the Arduino actually powers itself down. But I've also programmed in an automatic power cutoff, a timeout, which just happened right there. So the application is for, for example, battery powered instruments where you want a circuit to power up easily with the power button, but you don't want to have it run down the batteries if you forget to switch it off. Or maybe you want an instrument that'll stay powered up until it performs some measurement that might take some number of minutes. And then when it's done and it completes itself, it might store the data up to an SD card and then power itself down. So the components here are, I have just, just a manual push button switch that's, that's mounted on a breadboard adapter so it fits in there more reliably. I, I hate those little, those little breadboard switches because they always seem to pop out. The, the auto power module itself here, which there'll be a link at the bottom to the page that describes how the circuit works. The output power comes out here, and actually in this case is going to a 5 volt boost regulator. So it takes the 3.7 volts from this little uh, LiPo cell here and boosts it up to 5 volts to power up the Arduino. In other cases, you could just directly power a low power Arduino, like one that's running at, say, 8 megahertz. Then the LED is just actually connected up to an, an additional pin. So the circuit itself requires three pins on the Arduino. One is the signal that passes on the button signal to the Arduino so it can detect when I press to power it off. The other one's called the hold signal, which the Arduino sends back to the, the auto power module to tell it to keep the power on. And the power on will remain on for as long as that hold signal is applied. And then the LED, which is just an indicator that's used uh, to detect when you've held the button long enough to switch the circuit off. So I, when I press that, I wait until the LED lights up, and then when I release it, it powers back off. If you click on the link at the at the bottom of the video, you'll see um, the web page where I describe the circuit in detail. Uh, there's uh, at the beginning it talks about the reasons why you'd want to build a circuit like this, and why not just use a switch. There's a link here that shows you where you can actually order the circuit board that I made from OSH Park. Um, I think it's about a dollar or so to get to, to, to get three versions of the PCB. Here's a circuit. So to explain how the circuit works in a little more detail, I've got a simple animation. Everything starts when the user presses the button, switch S1, which closes. And then this causes current to flow to ground through resistor R1, which pulls down the base of the P-channel MOSFET there, the FDV302P, which causes the, the PFET to switch on and pulls up resistor R3 through diode D1, the one on the left there which in turn causes pin 5 of the TPS-27081 power control circuit to switch on and, and provide power. Then in a few seconds, the Arduino boots up and inserts the hold line high, which keeps it high. And then at this point, the user releases the switch, but because the hold line is asserted by the Arduino, pin 5 is kept high and, and power keeps flowing. Then at some point, of course, all that has to happen is for the Arduino to switch off the hold line and the power goes back off. Um, there's a couple ways to, to hook the circuit up. Here's basically the simplest way. You can just use the auto power module and a low power 3.3 volt version of the, of the Pro Mini. And there's a Shockey diode there, D1. That's mostly as a safeguard if you actually connect a programming adapter to the Pro Mini. You don't want to be supplying power back into the auto power module because you might get um, a phenomenon that's called latch up to happen. The version that I showed in the beginning of the video is using a, a boost converter that I got off of eBay again for I think about a dollar, two dollars, twenty cents or so. And it's just connected at the output of the auto power module, boosts the power up to five volts. And this lets you pretty much use any of the Arduino modules. 
code to make the auto power module work is fairly straightforward, but to make it even simpler, I wrote a small library, which I called autopower.h. So you just include autopower.h at the top of your sketch. The comments here kind of describe the way this works. Then you need to specify the three pins you're going to use for the LED, the hold signal, and the button. And then you define an object, uh, your instantiated object called auto power. In this case, I'm naming it power. And you pass in the, the, the pins for the hold button, the hold signal, excuse me, the button and the LED. And then an optional last parameter, which is the number of, of seconds, which if you, you need to hold the button down in order to switch off the power. If you don't specify this parameter, it'll default to two seconds. As it mentions in the comment above. Then you can optionally call set set timeout. You don't need to um, make this call. If you don't make this call, there will be no timeout. The, the, the circuit will continue to stay powered on until you manually power it off by pushing and holding the button for the required amount of time. <clears throat> in this case, I'm setting a timeout of 30 seconds. The thing you have to do, though, is in the, in the loop method, you have to periodically call update power. And this makes call to the library, the auto power library, and checks to see whether the timeout's elapsed or it performs all the all the steps to see if the button's been pushed or released or if it's been pressed long enough. Uh, as a side note, uh, pressing the button will, will also reset the timeout, so it's another way to keep the circuit operating. Now there's the, the full API, which includes a few more functions as listed down below. There's this shows the two methods of the constructor you can call with the optional uh, seconds parameter. Uh, this var name is what I call power above. It can be whatever you choose it to be. That's just the way that the C++ works. This is the update power call you have to make periodically. There's a, there's a manual power off call you can make if you want to. That's, that's provided in the case where, for example, you've detected that the battery voltage is too low and the circuit wants to power off the Arduino to save battery power. This is the set timeout call. There's also a call called, called reset uh, timeout. And that's in the case where you have a, a user GUI of some sort that's, that's, that's reading other buttons as you're operating the Arduino. Let's say you have an LCD display uh, and you're pushing buttons and performing functions. Um, you should, each time you process a user input, like responding to a button that the user's pressed, you can call reset timeout to basically reset the timeout, and, and that means that as long as the user keeps operating the unit, it won't it won't switch off power behind them automatically when the timeout expires. Of course, if you're not using the timeout function at all, this is this this really is of no use to you. Here's a sample parts list on Mauser for ordering the parts needed to build this circuit. They're not particularly expensive, even unit cost fifty four cents for the the key circuit. The the Texas Instrument parts that make it work. The Assault 23 dual diode array. The P-channel MOSFET, which is 34 cents. The four resistors and the, the single capacitor. So to build the circuit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be $1.48 plus 90 cents. If you're going to go through the trouble, I recommend maybe you click the times two or times three up here to build up three boards that you're going to get back from OSH Park. Maybe give one or two away to a friend. If you want to order the circuit board from OSH Park, just click the links provided there and you'll be taken to a page that looks like this. This is actually my fifth revision of auto power. I've continued to make it successively simpler uh, over time. Um, there's also a link on this page back to the same article you just came from. Just click the order link down here to order the board and uh, you'll be given, you know, it costs like, for example, 90 cents to order this particular board and you'll get, get actually three, three copies of it which is pretty cool. I think that's a really, OSH Park is an amazing service, particularly for very small boards like this. It's very expensive. If you're in a hurry, you can actually click the Super Swift service right there. It doubles the price, which is not much here, but you get it back a lot faster. The other interesting thing about it is that the, that the shipping cost is free, although they do have an expedited shipping service that costs $5, I think priority mail. If you like this video, and you want me to make more of them, please give it a big thumbs up.